Hey everyone, Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models, and here is Bandai's one to one scale cup noodle. Now, uh, finally, Bandai have branched out into the noodle model market, so it's good to see them catering for all of us modelers who are desperate to build scale model noodles. And, um, <laughs> sorry, I, was, uh, I tried to say that seriously, but uh, yeah, it's uh, this is going to be fun. Have Bandai gone crazy? Have I gone crazy? These are life's big questions. So, um, this is something my girlfriend ordered for me late last year, and it finally turned up, so yeah, I can't wait to get stuck in. Now, it um it does clearly say that this is not food. Do not eat it, just in case you are really tempted by the nice bright colours of the noodles and the juicy looking shrimp. Um, but yeah, so I don't think I'll be painting this up much. I think I'll just leave it to the construction to fill out all of the different colours. I might uh, detail up some of the veggies and the the shrimp there, just to make them slightly more realistic. And uh, yeah, so just having a look at around the box. So as you can see, all of the different colours have got different parts, different uh, moulded in different colours. And Bandai are famous for precision engineering, so I don't want to ruin the fit by painting these up. So I think I'll just leave them as is. So let's get started. Inside the box we have bags of screws, so this looks like the top of the mound of noodles, and the cup noodle, famous cup noodle logo, moulded in red. Some of the white and gold pattern around the outside of the cup. Some nice crisply moulded noodles, freeze dried, and this is for the green onion rolls, I think. And parts for the cup itself, finely moulded ingredients in Japanese. And finally, some stickers for all of the um, printed parts and the peel back lid and uh, some shrimp and the base of the cup and finally the instructions which um, they're usually pretty self-explanatory uh, picture wise but it's good that they've included both Japanese and English, just to make sure you know what you're doing. So that, oh, it's black and white and colour. Alrighty, so let's get building. So I'm just going to use some sanding sponges here. This is a 400 grit. Just to clean up some of these sprue knobs. So just beginning to assemble the upper portion of the cup. So this is the um, upper rim and just installing these coloured bands. Now to line this up, there's a specific part where there's an extra slot in the gold piece, and that just slots into part. Just got to find the right one there, I think. Oh, 
on that. So these all do line up in the correct orientation. It's a very subtle peg and groove system, but it is there just to make sure you get the right areas on the right side. Installing each letter of the cup noodle logo. Let's just press in. All right, so that's the cup constructed and pretty much all of it has been uh, managed with different molded parts, except there's just a couple of little bits like um, the join and the U there, also with between the L and the D that need stickers just to fill in that red. Or I suppose I could paint it, but I'll see how the stickers go. So now it's time to build the noodles.
All right, so there's the noodles installed and they're just kind of sitting freely. They're not really attached at all. And uh, what you can do now is remove the face plate. So there by removing the face plate, you can see how the noodles are suspended above the bottom of the cup, which allows the hot water to seep to the bottom, which was one of the innovations of the cup noodle back in 1971 when this first appeared in the shops. And yeah, so that's just a little way of seeing how these cup noodles uh, are so different from anything else. Bit of a history lesson there. So um, yeah, so that's installed now. I need to insert all of the fillings. So what I'm going to do is just cut them all out and put them in and see how it looks. And then I'll decide if I want to start um, doing any painting. Alright, so just having a closer look at some of these parts. So we've got uh, some lovely moulded bits of shrimp. And some really tasty looking lumps of egg. And of course, nice brown cubes of mystery meat. Alright, so now for the strip of leek, it says to cut down the middle to create two strips. Well, I must say that's uh, that's looking pretty appetising as it is. But um, let's finish off by adding all of the stickers to the outside of the cup, and then we can um, compare this to the real thing.
Okay, so I've applied all of the uh, labeling stickers, and um, I feel like it's probably the weakest part of this kit overall, just because of the um, alignment issues. And you know, they printed all of this in 3D into the mold, which was kind of pointless because once you put the sticker down, it inevitably kind of mismatches. I've tried my best to match it over here, but trying to match it all the way across, as you can see, the barcode doesn't match up. Um, it's probably just due to me placing it in the wrong place, but I kind of wish they hadn't molded all of that you know, lettering underneath because the real one doesn't have um, indentations, so you could have just got away with the sticker and it would have been fine. So that's a bit of a shame. Also, there's um, a few little marks, a few little spots in the lettering that need filled in with red. So instead of applying these stickers, which might be a bit clunky, I'm just going to just paint those in with some little blobs of paint. There are only small little places where they where it needs filling in, so this should be easy enough. And yeah, um, as far as the stickers for the shrimp go, I don't think I'll be using these because they'll just sit really awkwardly on these 3D pieces. So again, I might just use a, a nice little thin red wash and just go over these instead of using the stickers. But before I do that, um, any good modeler has a good reference material to start from, so I went out and found the real deal. Now, um, most supermarkets in New Zealand don't actually sell this brand, so I had to actually go to a, um Asian supermarket that imports a lot of Asian and Japanese food, and I managed to find one in there. So that was a nice little find, and as you can see, they're pretty much identical as far as, as, far as layout goes. So pretty happy with that, even the barcode number's the same. Um, the real one has this new uh, sustainable palm oil sticker, which uh, this one doesn't have, so that's shifted a few of this um, lettering around a little bit. But apart from that, it's pretty much identical. Well, there is a, an import label there. So, oops, there go the noodles. So what I'm going to do now is remove the shrink wrap and bust this open and see what the um, the fillings actually look like. I think this is the first time I've ever had food on the channel before. All right, so hmm, the shrimp are quite orange actually. If we grab one of these out, compare it to the plastic version, it's a very similar colour actually. And the egg's bright yellow, but a little strips of green, which is again pretty close. And the noodles underneath, of course. Alright, so I'm going to, yeah, I might um, use the mystery meat, just covered in some sort of lighter you know, colours. So I wonder if I could do a dry brush on the plastic ones. Alright, so I'm going to get set up for painting and be right back. Alright, so I've got a uh, solution here of this happens to be Vallejo Game Air Bloody Red, which I thought was appropriate. So um, I've just thinned it down with some acrylic thinner. Hopefully it's thin enough. And then I'm just going to Wash it over the shrimp parts. I might end up cleaning them up a little bit. Let's just give them a bit of a bit of colour variation. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of shrimp, so these look even more disgusting than than the original colours, but I'm sure I'll get over it. I'm just using a bit of Vallejo Basic Red just to fill in these little bits.
Now just using a bit of acrylic thinner, just going to clean up some of the painted lines over here. And I've also done a little bit of white dry brushing on the mystery meat, just to give it a bit of texture. So now all of the food is ready to be put back in, and then I can stick on the peel back lid. Alright, so there we have a completed Bandai 1 to 1 scale cup noodle, which is almost indistinguishable from the real thing. There's a few telltale seams and little bits and pieces on here that show that it's not quite the real thing, but you could possibly fool someone with this initially, <laughs> until they peel back the lid and then they'll see that something's not quite right. There, it still looks pretty tasty. And uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how to leave this, I'm not sure how long this will be sticky, the longevity of the fit along here, whether they're just to display it open or closed, um, I'll just have to decide that um, as it goes. But yeah, uh, it's a nice light-hearted subject, but it's always nice to uh, have a change of pace now and again to do something a bit different, and I've certainly learnt all there is to know about cup noodles, um, thanks to the instruction booklet which has lots of little bits of information about the real process and the factory and the history of it so it's always quite interesting and yeah so um i hope you've enjoyed that something certainly a, a bit different than my usual subject matter but yeah i hope it was a, a fun build video all the same so if you've got any questions or comments feel free to leave them below and i look forward to reading them so until next time thanks for watching and take care